Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. I heard you want to learn how to program in 2021. Let me show you how. So you want to learn how to code in 2021. And I'm sure you got your reasons. Is your reason you want to create a bot so you can get a PS5? Is your reason you want to learn coding so you can become a software engineer and earn over 200K a year? Or maybe it's just because you love the idea of creating things through code. If the last reason is yours, you are a hippie. If it's one of the first two, then you're on the right track. With the number of computer science enthusiasts increasing day by day and more and more people creating apps, websites, and programs, everyone wants to learn how to code. But with so many classes and courses available, the average Joe is like, where do I even start to learn how to code? And that's where I come in. As a Gen Z student who's developed programs, facial recognition softwares, apps, bots, you can check out PS5s and limited items, I feel like I can point you to the right direction on how to learn to code in 2021. Actually, I don't feel it, I know it. And with these tips, hopefully you'll be coding in just weeks time. Now, the first tip I can give you is to learn the fundamentals through any beginner Java or Python course on YouTube. Now, I began coding at the end of middle school and I first got into coding through watching this one tutorial series on YouTube completely free that is New Boss Tutorials Java series. Now, this is not sponsored, I've never met the guy. This is a tutorial series I personally use to get into coding. It covers all the basics such as integers, strings, da other data types, as well as more complex things such as summing arrays, comparing values, understanding hash functionality, and many, many more concepts. And I'm sure half the stuff I'm saying is gibberish to you guys, but trusting this tutorial series will really build you from bottom up and you'll be able to understand everything I'm talking about. Because in coding, the stronger the foundation, the more complex programs you'll be able to write in the future. Like, trust me on that. And now this goes into my second tip, and that is to learn Python or Java as your first language. Now, why am I saying these two languages? Well, Python is the future. AI development is at an all-time high, and Python is the language that most AI developers use to create this AI. So why not learn the language that is gonna be the most sought after language in the future? And on top of that, Python is super easy to use. Many software engineers recommend Python as your first language because the syntax is so easy to follow that it literally sounds like you're writing English. Throw back to AP Literature class. And Java is good too, many companies use Java, but personally, I would choose Python over Java simply because Python is more in demand, Java is more older, but nevertheless, you can use either language when it comes to fundamentals. And now don't worry about, oh, if I learn Java, I have to relearn Python, that'll take months. No, learning Java does not take months, it takes weeks. Same for Python, and once you learn one programming language, you can really learn any other programming language since syntax is overall very similar and is more about the concepts and understanding how to make your idea into code versus the actual syntax of a language. So don't worry about what your first language is, but if I had to pick one, I would say Python, so use that. Now learning Java and Python is more for back-end stuff, which is basically the stuff you don't see that goes on behind the scenes of a web page. Now what I'm going to talk about next is front-end design. And front-end design is basically all the stuff you see on a web page, such as the colors, the images, the text, etc. When it comes to front-end design, three main languages are used. CSS, JavaScript, and HTML. These three are combined together to create robust web pages that you see on the internet today. YouTube was made by those three. Google's web page was made by those three. Basically, by learning these languages, which is very easy, so many resources are online. You can build websites in no time. Now, why is this such a useful skill? Say you have a small company and you don't have enough money to hire a full-on professional web designer to create yourself a nice, beautiful website. Just do it yourself. Do it! And by learning these three languages, you can literally create a web page in no time that looks stunning and is very interactive. This is why most beginner programmers who don't go the back-end route usually start with these three languages because they like to create web pages and see their design firsthanded which JavaScript, CSS, and HTML allow you to do. And on top of that, if you become a master front-end designer, then I want you to know that front-end design is one of the most highest paying jobs right now and one of the most in-demand jobs, so you will never be homeless or broke. And now, the most important tip I can give you guys is to create projects. If I was given $1 trillion to give the best computer science tip I could ever give a beginner programmer, it would be to create projects. Creating projects is really how you learn how to code fully. Now you can watch computer science videos, all the tutorials on YouTube, this video, but you will never learn how to code until you actually do it yourself. Right? It's just like basketball. If you watch someone make threes, that doesn't mean you're going to make a three unless you practice. The biggest part about coding is overcoming the challenge where your code doesn't work the way you expect it to, aka the coder's nightmare. And writing super simple programs really isn't realistic of actual coding because these simple programs won't really introduce you to a lot of problems. Like if you write a program that prints out hello world to the screen, you can't really mess that up. Maybe you misspell hello, okay, just spell it correctly. And you're just like a 
two second fix. But in real world programming, problems usually aren't a simple fix. And you will realize that and develop that problem solving skill as you create more complex projects. Now, I'm not telling you to create Tesla or Google. You can create a simple calculator app or to-do list. And by creating small to medium difficulty apps like this, you face a number of challenges that you would never face if you create a program that just adds two numbers together and that's it. And the best part is you can actually use these projects to help yourself. For example, if you create a to-do list, why not use a to-do list app that you created to organize your day, to create a schedule for yourself? This is a huge motivation for most beginner programmers because sometimes coding can get really difficult and you may not want to keep going if you don't see results. Well, if you create a to-do list app and you literally use it every day, you're gonna be like, wow, I'm using something I created. And then you create more complex projects where maybe it's a to-do list app with multiple to-do lists or to-do list app that other people can sign in on and then other people are using your app. And the way you create these multiple user apps is by starting small, creating a calculator app that only you use, creating a calculator app that other people use, and then creating Tesla. And also guys, don't create projects that no one's gonna use or that you personally won't use because then you won't get that satisfaction. Create a project that you can actually use maybe once or twice. It doesn't have to be a to-do list app where you use it every day at least a project that you will find yourself using, maybe like a weather app or a Siri that literally opens programs depending on your voice input. That's some cool stuff that will really motivate you guys to keep on coding. Because the last thing you want to do is face coder burnout where you just don't feel like coding anymore and you just give up on the process. And as a beginner programmer, you can't really give up on something you haven't really dove yourself into yet. And the last tip I can give you guys is supplements. Now what I mean by this is once you're at the point where you're creating projects that are medium to high level difficulty, then you know, you're a programmer, you're officially a programmer and you can do whatever you want. But most programmers, even beginner ones, don't stop because they like to branch out and learn other languages because why would you just want to learn one language and be basic like that? By learning multiple languages, you can create new things because some languages have capabilities that others don't. And trust me, it's pretty simple. Once you learn one language, learning other languages is very easy. It's not like English and Spanish where once you learn English, then learning Spanish is easy. No, that's a whole different obstacle. With coding, it's not like that. Python is kind of similar to Java. Yes, the syntax is different, but the ideology is the same. That's why all programming languages can be picked up by any novice programmer, because they're all the same thing, they just look different. And these tips are really the best tips I can give you guys to learn programming in 2021 and really jumpstart your coding career. And hopefully if you guys create the next Tesla or Google, you better hit me up and link this video in your website that you create. If you guys want more CS videos, then be sure to like this video and comment down below, RV more CS and I surely will produce more CS videos. So thank you guys for watching. Peace out, dude. Peace out, dude. Peace.